Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Yannock. Today we're looking at the week of September the 20th to the 26th. Now, on the 21st, we're having a full moon. And this full moon is called the harvest moon. And what's, well, this is just the, the this month um, has been really difficult for a lot of people energetically while there were some times where things sort of flowed up a little um, towards this is all right thing energetically speaking this was a difficult month um, at least that's what i felt and also a lot of people have confirmed that um, and <coughs> we're only just beginning to see the end of these difficulties. As we're moving towards the full moon, it is called the harvest moon. And because it is about harvesting things, what will happen in September for us, we as a you know, collective, individually and, and as a collective, this is a time for all of us to actually take stock, to actually have a look at what have I actually accomplished in this life because what we oftentimes don't do you know we could just say like well you know have i done all the things i had planned in september have i done them rather than sort of looking at your life's work as if your life is over tomorrow right so unfortunately with harvest uh, moon coming in and with the um energy of um taking stock and therefore judging yourself. It is important um, to remember why this is so strong this month. And obviously it is so strong this month because um, of the number nine. So in astrology, seven and nine are really strong reoccurring numbers. And nine is the number of completion. And September is the ninth month. So the energy of completing things is quite strong. So when you take stock, energetically speaking, you might feel, oh, I haven't achieved anything because certain things are probably just in flux. So what I'm trying to say in my own clumsy way, no matter what the overall energy is going to be like, or what the guides have to say for each and every star sign, I think it's probably important for you to realize that if you are a person that is very judgmental toward yourself, you're not doing yourself a favor, right? Really, really important to not be too harsh on yourself, um, no matter what you're looking at as the new moon comes in on the 20, uh, sorry, the full moon comes in on the 21st. So, shall we do this? Here we go. This is the overall energy for the week ahead. We're looking at the week of September the 20th to the 26th, 2021. Um, please, if you like the video, please like it, subscribe, and please share it widely. Really, really important. And if you want to support my work financially, you can now just buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. You will find the link in the description box. The overall energy for this week is interesting because we're talking about the week where the new moon happens, right? And I have a... Um, I don't even know what it's called, but I have a, um, a deck of cards that I hardly ever use because I, I work with my guides, so I have my, my animal decks. And just now I um, have a couple of different decks and I'm going to use this. And for the overall energy, in the week where the, where the full moon is happening, openness came up and look at the, at the depiction. Here's our full moon. So I find that quite interesting. We have enlightenment and openness. Openness obviously has to do with when we pay attention to what we have or have not yet accomplished. This is this taking stock thing that's going to happen for us energetically. Openness means don't, again, I said that already, don't be too harsh on yourself. Allow for things to have an open ending because we're all works in progress and we're still progressing. So if things aren't that that great, you know, by the looks of it, 
you know, it's not the end. And there are uh, possibly areas of your life where you're struggling and th things can still get much better. So please don't despair. That's what the openness really uh, means for us all is to be open minded and not too bucked down by whatever we find as we take stock. And then the other energy that we have was enlightenment. Now, enlightenment is a really big word. And a lot of people just throw it around as if it was confetti. It is an accumulation of lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and not getting annoyed with, with, with the shit life brings before you're anywhere near enlightened. Right? So just understand that because I, I hear that term quite a bit, oh, I'm enlightened. Fuck off. Right? When you are awakened, which is important, you know, to have an awakened state and um, therefore see things for what they really are. Why do people always strive for the ultimate? I want to be enlightened and I you know, want to know everything. We are human. We have been given a body. We are here to accumulate um, and make memories and, and decisions uh, until we have exhausted every little thing. So when people get bucked down, bucked down about um, enlightenment and then it sort of becomes a label and and i have seen posts on facebook where people are saying oh someone was complaining about something rightly and like, oh you're not enlightened right just because you say yes oh yes everything is fine that's not enlightenment that's bollocks right so don't put a label that you haven't even reached on others right ha huh. rent over the reason why enlightenment shows up is because once we understand that we are never finished and we're never, what's the word, we're, we're never fully done, there's always other things um, that can be improved. So the very fact that you are a bit more open-minded about what you find, should you be a person that wants to take stock and reflect on life, reflection is always great, enlightenment then means that you will get a lot of answers by just looking at things for what they are, not for what you want them to be or wish them to be, and not, especially not for what other people think you should have accomplished. Because energetically speaking, I know I'm, I'm <laughs> it sounds like when I'm, I'm in a bad mood, I'm not. It's just I'm doing this video for this week. So therefore I'm sort of transported into the energy for this week and there is a frustration energy that comes in with the full moon. And it is really important because what people oftentimes do, they talk badly about other people or show other people's um, misgivings to look better themselves. And it is really not spiritual at all to do that. But that energy comes here as well. So my feeling is that people will judge you when you're having a really hard time figuring out, you know, am I going in the right direction? Have the decisions that are made in life caused a lot of harm or a lot of good? And just come to terms with your role on the planet, right? But it is your perception and your thinking about stuff that matters here, not what other people Met, uh, think uh, matters or, or whatever opinion they have. So, you know, it's really important to, to, to realize this because this is a week where we are already judging ourselves. And the last thing we need is the judgment of others. And because there is frustration in the energy of the week, um, my feeling therefore is that a lot of people will judge. So for the people who do judge, right, look at your own stuff. Right? You have enough to do if you just reflect on what you find. Um, and for the people who are being judged, remember, not your monkey, not your circus. You cannot control what other people think of, think of you, but don't take it on. Right? If someone says, oh, you really, you know, you should have done this by now, whatever that means, this by now thing. Um, it's another really weird thing, you know, um, when people all of a sudden sort of use your, your age against you kind of thing. Um, you know, um, growing old, really, and this is a phrase that is out there, is a privilege denied to many, right? So 
Who is to say that you even have to accomplish anything in life? How about you're just a good person? Isn't that enough? So there is all these different things and my the overall energy really tells me that this is a week where a little bit of viciousness is in the air because there is a lot of frustration um, still going around. And while the harvest moon itself is not interested in disharmony, it is just interested in let's take stock, let's just look at what we have accomplished, what can we harvest from our life, um, what, what comes back from our life that now suits you or the greater good, right? Rather than um, being negative about the things that really don't work so well. Right? Oh, that was the longest um, <laughs> overall energy that we ever had. I, I apologize, um, but um, the energy that I'm feeling as I record, or, or um, it's almost like, like a pre record, I record this bef a week before the week happens, kind of thing. Um, and therefore, I, I find myself transported, um, and the energy really isn't great. So, you know. Be out there, be positive, and, you know, stay away from, from people who are really, really negative. Okie dokie. So, we're still in the star sign of Virgo, and we're moving into Libra uh, midweek. So, but we're still in Virgo. So, our first star sign, therefore, is Virgo. Here's what we have to say for Virgos. Or the guys have to say for Virgo. I only work here. <laughs> Interesting. The overall energy really informs each star sign and we have that every week that the overall energy is sort of seeping in almost creeping into the next star sign because for Virgo the very first thing that the guides tell you is have solitude seek solitude really really important you have solitude and you have oneness so as you reflect on life and as you think about, you know, what have I accomplished? Because again, it's, it's the number nine, it's the number of completion. Um, what the guides are saying to you, don't necessarily have to share it with everybody, right? Even if you feel like, wow, I really want answers here, find them another time. And you really will very likely find them in solitude. So Virgos, your message this week is to really reflect upon your life, if I look back upon my life, <laughs> right? And, um, but do it in solitude. Allow yourself to be with yourself. Really, really important. So that was Virgo going to the next star sign, Libra. If I look back upon my life, right? Libra. Remember what the overall theme is. You have wisdom and release. So wisdom is the knowledge the inner knowledge that whatever you find this month in your uh, in your stock taking right um, you know exactly what has put it there and what it took to probably even survive all of this so use the knowledge that you have accumulated in this lifetime and if you're lucky enough to know about your past lives then by all means but um, because you have wisdom and release so what that means is look at it from a higher point of view look at, at everything and anything from a higher point of view and if you find or should you find which is likely because you have release as an energy here so should you find that um, you are a bit disappointed or maybe there's pain that comes back to you as you are taking stock. And this stock taking is not that we all stop and we're like, ooh, let's just look at this, right? This is not how this works. There are a lot of people who are really, really conscious that, that the, the harvest moon aids that. But um, because it is the number nine and, and the number of completion and therefore the ninth months we are in, there is a tendency for all of us to look at things for what they are because it allows us to make changes. So when you have release, Libra, Librans, that's because the guides are saying whatever still sits there, whatever you find in your life's work that needs to go, this is the week to acknowledge it so it can be released, okay? 
That was Libra, going to the next star sign, which is Scorpio. We're looking at the week of September the 20th to the 26th, 2021. Uh, nearly there. See, it's because I don't really use that deck a lot. Um, the cards are sort of sticking together. <laughs> For um, Scorpios, you have relaxation and potential. So, all you need to do this week, it's sort of self-explanatory, um, is while, again, it makes sense uh, for, for you to reflect on your life, but while you're doing it, do it in a, in a non-judgmental day, do it, a way, do it in, a, in a way where you, again, are not burdened by it. That's where, where relaxation comes in. If you do things and you, you relax and you kind of go like, well, you know, that, that whatever I find now as I reflect upon my life. Um, and for Scorpios, the, what the guides give me is what will likely um, affect you the most is in a way um, missed opportunities is what I'm getting as, as a phrase. So you will probably find, oh, this person has moved on and this person I'm not in touch with anymore. And you, you probably have some regrets, if that makes sense. And all the guides are saying, relax around it. Because your next energy is potential. So you looking at these missed opportunities as missed opportunities. And maybe you find yourself thinking, I could have done that differently. Or had I done X, Y, and Z, maybe things would have turned out differently. But nobody's asking you to go back there. If you noticed, or should you notice, Scorpius, that your past actions somehow left a bitter taste in, in someone's mouth, if that makes sense, or in your own, um, that's when you, when you understand that you have now reached a different step, a different way of looking at things, therefore you have made progress. And therefore, now that you realize whatever I've done in the past that was probably questionable, um, and now you understand that you wouldn't do it again, that's real progress. And that's when your potential to see things and continue to see things very differently actually then thrives. Okay, that was Scorpio. And now we're going to the next star sign which is Sagittarius. Here we go. Sagittarians, you have standstill and abundance. Again, very, very self-explanatory. <laughs> what the guides are saying to you, because the energy of the entire month of September was in most cases and in most places, um, lowish and it was the energy of feeling burdened by things that was around a, a lot of people so a lot of people have probably have had to deal with anxiety and probably had a flare up of of um, depression coming back in kind of thing so energetic speaking was heavy and because you have standstill that does not mean that you're at a standstill they're asking you to stand still for a minute because obviously you live in all the energies that we are uh, uh, subjected to. And if you are just focus on that very moment, just focus on the now and on nothing else, that allows you a different focus. And that's what the guides want you to do because you have abundance, which means once you learn to not wander either into the past or into the future or into any worries. That's when abundance comes in. That's when you can manifest anew what you feel is still missing from life. Right? Actually not a bad idea. Here we go. That was the star sign of Sagittarius. And now we're going into Capricorn. We're looking at the week of September the 20th to the 26th. 2021 you are watching energy and star sign readings um, if you like my readings you can like and subscribe and share the video and if you want to support me financially you can now buy me a coffee by www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas so let's see and what we got for capricorns you have new beginnings and delight 
This makes sense because we're in September. September is the ninth month. And now I sound like a broken record. September is the ninth month. It, num nine is the number of completion. So whatever hasn't been working for you is ready to leave you. So your task, therefore, is to not look back under any circumstances. Just acknowledge what is working and what isn't, because new beginnings can now come as you realize, even if it may be painful, it is time for new beginnings. And delight as the next energy means that when you actually move on, even though it is uh, uh, could be quite a bit of a shock, all of a sudden you're here and then you're there kind of thing, depending on um, how this applies to your situation, delight means that a lot of you out there, uh, because I always say that, you know, you do these readings and um, they're, they're for a specific star sign and they're general readings. So they, they might not necessarily, you know, come true for everybody or, or, or fit everybody's situation. But delight really means that instead of expecting, wow, I've been making these massive changes and you're expecting a breakdown, you might actually find that you actually breathe a sigh of relief because you managed again to not be stuck. Okay, that was Capricorn going to the next star sign, which is Aquarius. Here we go. Aquarius, you have two C words. <laughs> you have community and courage. So what the guides are saying to you as you look at where you are actually. And it makes sense for Aquarius because as the water bearer, you are energetically sort of programmed almost to give and to help and to be there for others. And this week where you actually really reflect on Either you reflect on what am I doing here <laughs> or you reflect on, oh, look how far I've come, depending on how you tick, if that makes sense. This is the week for you. Should you feel all of a sudden isolated? If you feel like, whoa, I feel I probably made a mistake here. Then what the guides are saying, rather than um, trying to frantically change everything, let's just say back to how it was, um, reach out because you have community which is basically the way of, the, of the, the, the guide saying, you're not as alone as you think you are. So reach out and courage means obviously that you might not be a person that reaches out easily, simply because once you open up, you're vulnerable. But because you have the community energy, um, and I said that earlier, you know, in my little rant, that there's loads of people out there who are judgmental. You will know to whom to open up to and you will be just fine. But don't just sit there and be sad or be somehow um, unhappy about your life um, because this is not the end and there's tons of stuff still happening in your future, if that makes sense, right? So please, 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 Aquarius, uh, and Aquarians, please reach out. Okay. Now we're going into Pisces, my favorite star sign because it's mine. <laughs> Let's see what they got for my fellow Pisceans and for me. And I already, <laughs> I already find that funny because the number one lesson in my life personally is still patience. I am a very impatient man and I was a very impatient child, a very impatient teenager, a very impatient young man. man. Now I'm in a very, a very impatient middle-aged man, whatever that means. Point is, patience is, I know that, is my biggest learning curve. And guess what the, what the guides ask us to have? Patience. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see this in this depiction. So we have patience and yet there's a bird taking off. So the bird is taking off 
because the bird knows when to do that. Which brings us to the next energy for Pisceans, which is change. So we have change right here, right? So, whatever is happening at this point in time, as we all, as Pisceans, reflect on life, as we try to figure out, you know, uh, and I get this, this is the way the, the guides phrase it to me, um, have we done well in life? Have we been proactive? Have we been good? If that makes sense, this is really also about um, how much karma we think we probably have created. So this is about, again, a bit of a, of, of a self-guilt trip kind of thing that might come up for some of you Pisceans. Um, and all the guides are saying is, just be patient because change is the outgoing energy for this week. So if not much is happening and if you are in, in a place of feeling trapped and maybe stumped and sort of held back now and again the universe doesn't necessarily promise but that sounds really promising to me because as you are being patient this week what we're looking at for Pisceans is change change will come things will not and cannot always stay the same so whatever irks you this week is now much easier to manifest if that makes sense right so um that's really important for for us also what it means for pisceans is to embrace change which is easy for some and not easy for uh, and to others or for others but this is the messages that we have had for pisces wow i love it <laughs> so let's go to the next star sign which is aries Let's go and have a look what we got. Hmm. Okay, Aries, you have embracing and taking risks. Embracing really means that as we look at our lives and as we sort of try to sort of assess our lives and all the decisions we made therein, harvest time, hence the harvest moon in September. They're asking you to embrace whatever it is you, you find. Whatever shape you're in, whatever the accumulation of your life's choices and decisions caused for you, you're just taking stock. You're not at the bottom of a lake and you're not at the end. right? So embrace whatever it is you find for yourself and then you have to take risks so whatever just say you feel okay i actually wanted to do this with my life but i haven't then take some risks right so um, don't just hope for things to get better make them happen right like like picard always says make it so really really important take some risks you know allow yourself to be daring really really important this week for um, Aries. Now we're going to the next star sign, which is Taurus. Taurus, you are being asked to stay in the flow of things. Go with the flow. And you have flow and voyage. So, in other words, it really sort of doesn't matter where you are at in life because it is just a pit stop, right? Just keep going with the flow. Whatever you find, whatever you think when you reflect uh, uh, on your life, um, everything is tweakable, anything is tweakable. And for now, just go with the flow. And because you are on a voyage, you are on a journey, there's no way you can predict predict where the journey is going, even if you plan it out very well, which is a bit of a Taurus thing as well. You like to be uh, very analytical at times, and you also like to plan things out, which is why some of your voyages and some of your journeys um, have been derailed um, or maybe didn't even happen, right? So that's why the guides are saying is don't plan a million and one things. Just go with the flow and remember 
you are on a journey. Allow yourself to just follow wherever the road takes you and be at peace with it. Right? That was Taurus going to the next star sign, which is Gemini. Let's have a look. Gemini's. <laughs> you have truth and adventure. So, <coughs> obviously you have the truth, which means whatever you find as you reflect. And, I, and I'm fully aware that not everybody reflects. So, if you are watching this video and think like, you know, well, what is he all about? I'm not reflecting on anything. Then this is not your video. I can only tell you what the energy of the week, which is a bit of a heavy energy, is telling us. Because we're in the ninth month, the ninth of completion, where we should probably look at things that we started and see if they actually make sense. And we have the harvest moon coming in, which is about harvesting what we have achieved and taking stock. Really, really important for those who do to realize that whatever you find, you can take it as face value. Don't make it sound better if you don't find it to be that great, right? Just allow yourself to say like, okay, that happened. That is the truth of it. And allow that feeling of, yes, I acknowledge it, to flow through you, if that makes sense, because your next card here is adventures. So again, once you learn to be in the now, we had there was another star sign earlier, once you are capable and, and able to just flow with things and are just in the now, you have no idea what, 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 what can or will happen next because you are going on adventures, which is a really good thing because it already denotes that no matter what you find, this is by no means the end. Really, really important. Okay, so I don't really know any Geminis out of the top of my head. The thing that the guides just gave me was um, about a Gemini passing over. So if you watch, are watching this and you know a Gemini that is at the crossroads, then I feel that the message also applies there. There is a lot of adventure to come. This is not the end. You know, the soul will never die and life continues, even though it is harder for you when that person is no longer here. But and should you be a Gemini that has had really bad news and you know that, you know, you might not be here much longer. And I'm not even saying this is happening. It's just the guys give this to me. So I feel, you know, when they give me something that specific, I should say it. Right. So just this is just a way of the universe saying to you, it's going to be all good. Right. Because nothing is ever the end. And it's literally, um, they give me, there's, a, there's a, a German band called Tangerine Dream, who were really big in the UK. Um, the founding member, he once said, there is no death, it's just a change of cosmic address. And that quote is what they give me right now. So, um, I don't know to whom this will make sense, uh, but um, there it is. Okay, so that was Gemini going into the star sign of Cancer. We have Cancer and Leo left. And um, so we're nearly through. So, Cancerians, hmm. you have transformation and healing chaos. So, huh. wherever you, whatever you are doing right now, you are still going through a phase of not knowing whether or not things will work. So you're going through transformation and I feel it is topically. So while you have a very good idea who you are and what you're capable of, so this is not so much about work, um, you, are, you are changing. You are looking at things differently, but there's a lot of stuff you can't anticipate. And that's what the guides are saying to you, right? So it is a bit, um, because you're going to, through transformation, you need to therefore allow for feeling off and for feeling not in charge and not in control really really important and then you have healing chaos which means while you're forced almost to just take things as they come without being really capable or able to to pres presume where things are going that's where the healing chaos is starting 
this is all designed to trigger something where you feel like wow so i'll give you an example you could either think i have been in that situation way too long and it needs to change kind of thing right or you 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 you're more sort of um a self-aware face where you say like wow um there's a lot of pain inside me and a lot of damage has been sort of done to you cancerians if that's the case for you then because you're going through changes that could be life-changing because transformation usually is you find yourself while you're healing in a state of not sure why why this is flaring up now i'm not sure why i have these thoughts now and all the guides are saying is it is a it is a chaotic healing that is happening within you it's not something you can pinpoint you know sometimes you have these times and you know okay i've been through this relationship for instance now i have a bit of me time so obviously that that will then make you know make itself known uh, so it can be released i don't feel that for gemini it's it might not be super specific here um the point is even though you have healing chaos which doesn't mean you're healing chaos right this is healing chaos really really uh, important to make that distinction it does matter whether or not you can understand what is actually happening right now just remember if you have moments where you feel like crying tears are sacred medicine it is still healing even if you feel overall life is chaotic right that was cancerians going to the very star last star sign um for this week um which is leo let's have a look wow now that very is very interesting okay <laughs> leos you have flexibility and stillness now as a star sign that is represented by lions right remember a lot of big cats rest a lot but the the flexibility that you need to have here flexibility is here and stillness is what the guides are saying is and again it's one of those overlapping things that we just had with cancer where there are certain things you cannot control which is not good for leos because you can be rather controlling and i don't mean this in a judgmental way but your energy energetically speaking and by your representation you like to be in charge right so if you're not in charge you feel vulnerable all the guys are saying to you is be flexible this week allow for things to be rather different right and whatever you find should you take stock just look at it and be flexible in how you react to it and because your outgoing energy is stillness so what they're saying to you you don't have to do a bloody thing you don't have to always come up with stimulation for you know even if you stimulate others you know um you don't have to always call the shots just to make things happen just be flexible in the way you see life and you let life play out this week and then try and the emphasis on, is on is on trying <laughs> try to be in the now try to be in the zone of calmness right if that makes sense and just be as still as you possibly can and let things play out a little bit right so don't be too narrow-minded either because that's what, another thing that flexibility is, is asking you is to be not narrow-minded um so in other words whatever happens this week for leos let it happen right let it happen and um remain as calm as you can so that was all we have time for this is energy and star sign readings with myself thomas Yark. thank you all for watching i see you all very soon bye, -bye.